Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and Peel Combs Asian Art, located in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is Monday, September 9th, 2019. And in this video, we're going to take a look at some of the uh, things that are going to be on offer this week in, in New York at Asia Week between Sotheby's, Christie's, and Bonham's. There's a lot of catalogs. There's so many catalogs, I can't possibly go through them all. Uh, all of the sales have things worthwhile to look at, some, some great things of merit, and some really interesting and unusual things. And we'll get into them. Um, if you haven't seen the catalogs, come over to bitamount.com. And as, you, as many of you know, on the homepage, there's a button here for the reference bookcase. And if you click it, it brings you over here. And here are all the catalogs uh, for this week's sales. And there's other books on here, too. This list is growing. We're up to 467 catalogs uh, 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 currently. And there'll be close to 500, certainly, before the year's over. But at any rate, there's some great things on offer. And we're going to start over here at Christie's important Chinese ceramics and works of art. And uh, in particular is the cover lot, which is this amazing Tang Dynasty uh, jade. You don't see a lot of jades like this from the Tang Dynasty. This is an extremely rare one. And uh, if we hop over to it uh, right here, I've got a little list I'm working off of because there's so many things. This is it. Um, this is also from the Jungkook collection. And those of you that have been around for a while and been following the auctions in New York, uh, Stephen Jungkook uh, was a phenomenal collector. Actually, there was two, two, two Jungkooks that collected the father and then the son. Um, Midwest family uh, had a highly successful business uh, tool and die company. They're still in business to this day. And uh, they've collected thousands of great objects. They've been generous with their, uh, with their property, lending to many institutions. And they collected really interesting things really cool stuff and this is one of them is this uh, fantastic jade uh, head it's got an estimate of two and a half to three and a half million dollars it's about six inches uh, from 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 the end of its nose down but very very rare and we'll see how that does and they did include some nice pictures of it so you could really zoom in and get a look at the uh, texture of the jade which is so crucial really examine the surface how it was carved uh, see all the little tiny details details like this. It's uh, just a, a wonderful thing to look at. Uh, most of you aren't going to be trying to buy it. So uh, it's worth coming over and having another good, you know, having it a good look. All right. That's just the, that's just one of the many things that are in this sale. But this this is a lot of people are wondering how this will do. Uh, it's extremely rare and we're going to it's going to be a test of the market. See how it does. All right, and then on to this, uh, a very fine pair of, um, uh, these are Western Zhao bronzes. It's a pair of them, and these are the sort of unusual ones with the vertical ribbing in them uh, and these lovely handles and so forth. This is a ritual vessel. Uh, it was made in the uh, 10th or 9th century B.C., extremely old, great surface on these, and uh, uh, I forget, this thing had pretty good provenance. It's up here. Here it is. Um, uh, it came from the Chu Collection in um, San Francisco and then was later sold by Eskenazi. Uh, the great London dealer had them. I, they may be in his book in the dealer's hand. You'd have to check. But these are these are quite rare, and they're estimated at five to 700000 for the pair. And uh, the, these bronzes are pretty good size. This particular, these two are 13 inches. They're over a foot tall each. They're not small and uh, they have great undisturbed surfaces on them. So uh, a lot of people are wondering how they'll do. It's, this is sort of a test of the... There's a lot of bronzes coming up uh, in the in this week's uh, series of sales, by the way. The Himalayan works of art, Tibetan bronzes in particular. Um, uh, uh, Christie's and Sotheby's seem to have a lot of them. There's been a lot of them on the market earlier this year. So um, it, se it seems that the, there's some real testing of the market that's going to occur with so many bronzes coming out. Uh, but the, the, there's some fantastic ones. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. We're hopeful, right? Always be hopeful. All right, and then on to this. This is, I think, one of the greatest things they're selling. Um, this is an absolutely uh, fantastic uh, uh, a jade uh, alms bowl. It was carved during the Qin Lung period with high relief Buddhas on it. Uh, absolutely fantastic thing. It has seven Buddhas, um, a beautiful Khotan jade. Uh, here it is. And uh, these are rare. There aren't many of these around. There's a few of them. The, the, the uh, Palace Museum has one, I believe. 
And um, but the the carving and the texture of this bowl is just fabulous. And it's about nine inches in diameter. It's pretty good size, and it's got a pretty good estimate, two to three hundred thousand dollars. But it doesn't seem crazy to me. But we'll see. We'll see how much uh, the buyers, uh, the buyers in China, especially because they drive so much of the market, see how much they like it. Um, we'll we'll know in a few days. But uh, just a, a beautiful piece of jade, beautiful color, and um, outstanding. All right. And now, mosey on over to, uh, let's see, oh, page 120. Here we go. There we go. Furniture. This catalog has some great furniture on it, in it. And a lot of it was sold originally by uh, Grace uh, Brew Woos. Okay, um, she, she's the lady that put out that wonderful uh, multi-volume set of furniture that she's handled over the years. She's certainly uh, one of the top one or two Chinese furniture dealers in the world and had great things. And there's some stuff coming out of a collection uh, that she helped form. Uh, it's interesting. I mentioned this before in other videos. Uh, uh, there's a lot of collectors out here. When you check the provenance where the stuff comes came comes from, very often it was never – these people didn't buy from um, – uh, auction houses very often. The Irvings were, were sort of like that. There was the great collection that came out of the Philippines. She bought everything from top-line dealers, okay, and there's a good strategy behind that, um, not just relying on auction houses. Dealers uh, uh, often get things that are absolutely out of this world, and they never make it to auction, okay. For some dealers, auctions are the last the last shot to get rid of something. Um, so, that's that's just the reality of it. But this is, here's a good detail of this thing: uh, beautifully carved Ming uh, furniture, uh, lovely table. And uh, what's the estimate on this thing? I didn't mention it. The estimate is uh, six to eight hundred thousand dollars for this table. It's a, it's a, they call them demountable Han um, a trestle a trestle leg table. Very nice, beautiful color. And uh, then on to this. This is one of the greatest. Uh, folding chairs that's been on the market in years. Uh, these were made in the 18th century. Uh, Chin Lung, there's a portrait of Chin Lung coming up in here that was uh, done by uh, Giuseppe Castiglione, the, the, the Jesuit uh, painter who was a favorite of the court and a good friend of the emperor, and it paints him in one of these. But this is a really great folding chair. And uh, there's a whole section in here on this, a Huan Hua Li horseback arm chair. If you're interested in Chinese furniture, take some time and go through this catalog. Uh, it, it has some beautiful illustrations. Uh, here's a picture of the Chin Lung Emperor seated in one. He's receiving tribute horses um, from um, uh, Kazakhstan, I believe, in this one. This was done by Castiglione, and uh, that's 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 the one of these chairs, but this is just a great one. They also show illustrations. They have illustrations of other ones that uh, are around in collections or have been in auctions, but this is right at the top of the heap, and the estimate on this chair is one to one point five million dollars. It was done in the late Ming Dynasty, but just elegant and and superbly well done. Just a great chair. All right, and there's a side shot of it, and there it is folded up. They actually do fold, and uh, apparently they're remarkably comfortable. I have never sat in one of these. Um, I've sat in lesser chairs of this type, but not one that good. All right. And uh, there's a lot of other furniture. There's another uh, trestle leg table coming up with a four to six hundred thousand dollar estimate. Not quite as interesting as the other one. Still very very good. Um, and there's a really really great uh, uh, Hanwali uh, horseshoe back chair. Um, uh, this is uh, let's see. Also a 17th century estimated at 800 to 1.2 million just a sublime piece of furniture, okay? And this was also sold by uh, Grace Wu Bruce in Hong Kong in 1997, a little over 20 years ago. Here they are, okay? And uh, they have some good shots of, uh, of the peg and, the peg and how the chairs are assembled and so forth. And then there's another great uh, recessed leg table. Uh, this is a very beautiful example, estimated at two to three hundred thousand dollars. Also from Grace Wu Bruce, she she had amazing sources. This is another that she sold, estimated at two hundred fifty to three hundred fifty thousand. Uh, this is a pair. And on and on and on. There's some very good wood in this sale. Uh, this is also a very nice Huan Bali Baitong or brush pot 18th, maybe early 19th century. They hedged a little bit. And uh, this was uh, sold by uh, Kola Ma in Hong Kong in the 90s. He was also another great dealer. 
all right, and on and on and on we go. So if you like Chinese furniture, there's some great examples in here and uh, certainly worth looking at. And there's one of these checkerboard top uh, tables, um, uh, which are parquetry enamel. They, they call it parquetry, but they look to me like checkerboards. At any rate, it's uh, uh, em em embellished with zeton. And uh, that's got a fairly modest estimate on it of uh, 80 to 120,000. So we'll see how it does, but uh, beautiful stuff. And then uh, mosey on over to here. This is, a, this is part of the Mayer, Robert and, and Beatrice Mayer's collection is in this catalog. They're great collectors. Uh, they bought fabulous things um, over the last, uh, oh, I don't know, 30 years. And um, this is a very, very large um, uh, chin lung tea dust glaze hoo shaped vase. All right, most of these aren't this big. This one is 21 inches tall. That's a very big pot. And uh, it's uh, got an estimate of, uh, let's see, what's the estimate? I think it's 60 to 80, yeah, 60 to 80 thousand dollars. But this has a beautiful glaze on it. When you examine these glazes, these tea dust pieces, it should have this very, the best ones have this very elegant matte finish. And this has it. And the uh, wonderful mask and ring handles on the side, on the sides, and done in relief. And you can see where the glaze pulled back a little, revealing the uh, the uh, the base material of the pot. And uh, we'll see how that did, does. All right. But again, great stuff. Just you know, you just. Uh, but these are huge. This is a very big j a jar. This is a really big one. It's almost two feet tall for a piece of tea dust. That's unusual. All right. And then on to. Uh, this, the pair of Kangxi Fu Lions. Uh, Kangxi Fu Lions are not especially rare, but I found the coloration on these just to be beautiful. Just very, very, very pretty uh, uh, across the board. Uh, nice, strong colors, bright colors. The, the, this beautiful turquoise in two different shades. It's interesting because the one on the right is a little greener with a little yellower head. And then the uh, f female is a little lighter with a lighter yellow head. The bases are about the same, but excellent quality. And you can pull it in and get a good look at it. Get a real good look at what these big Kangxi pieces look like. These were about 14 inches tall. Um, and they have photographs of them too, which is sort of interesting in the house where they came from, okay, the Oliver Culver House. Uh, this picture was taken in 1978, and there they are up on the mantel on uh, flanking an old American mantel clock. Looks like a Willard maybe. And um, those are estimated at thirty to $40,000, which doesn't seem crazy, all right, because they, they are, uh, I think, um, much prettier than many of many Kung Shi examples that are floating around. So we'll see how it does. All right. And then um, on to this. I had mentioned this in last week's video, but this pair of vases was submitted to us uh, uh, for our opinion on it by a fellow that had bought them, and he, he thought they were good, but he wasn't quite sure. And we wrote him back, and we said, those are wonderful. They're uh, uh, um, a Republic period, um, beautiful, uh, beautifully painted. I couldn't, I couldn't tell by who, who the artist was by the seal, uh, but... In any event, I told them, you know, send them off, uh, get a hold of Mike Bass at Christie's. They sh you know, I, I told them thirty to 50000 as I mentioned last week. And Christie's, upon seeing them, uh, thought they were a little better. And they made them, estimated them at forty to $60,000. And I hope the guy does fabulously well with them because uh, they're just a beautiful pair of early blue and whites. Okay. And now on to... Uh, the next catalog, let's see how we're doing here. This is the the Art Institute of Chicago. Now, there's something interesting going on here. The Art Institute of Chicago, which is a great institution, is deaccessioning some things, and they gave quite a bit to Christie's from which they could build an entire catalog. But Sotheby's also has a component of them of early early pieces, uh, uh, Sung, Tang, and that sort of thing. So if, if, if you want to get some things to so some great museum provenance, uh, check both of them out. Check the check Check the lots that are at Christie's and check the ones that are over at Sotheby's. Uh, the sale is in a couple of days. It's on the 12th, so you have time. Uh, I, but I would seriously look, look into it because they give the provenance of all the pieces uh, from who these, these came from before when they were benefacted to the museum. So that certainly makes them interesting and uh, adds another, you know, a nice element. Uh, to it, okay. Uh, if you don't know about the Chicago Art in Institute, Art Institute, it was built in 1879 after the Great Fire, and uh, it was it was started initially sort of as an artist school with a with a museum element, 
And then after the Great Chicago Ex Exposition in 18, uh, what year was that? 1893. Um, they, they really beefed up for that, uh, the World's Fair, and the museum became very well known after that. It really gave it a bump, and a lot of benefactors came out and started supporting this museum, which is a great thing. And they ended up with a massive collection. They have a very significant Asian art collection. They're not getting rid of it by any stretch, but they've got duplicates, they've got things they don't need, and they want to diversify their collection a bit, just the way the Metropolitan Museum Art is doing right now. And we'll get to that with parts of the Irving uh, gift. The Irvings left them a huge amount of stuff, and I'm sure there are lots of duplicates uh, or things close to it, so we'll see. But the uh, Chicago Institute of Art stuff, some of it, I think, is very reasonably estimated. And if, if you're not a six-figure buyer, um, you might take a look at this, okay? And in here, there's a, a very nice Ming Dynasty uh, Feiwa jar. They have a number of these, but these are those high-relief Feiwa. Um, it is, this is a 14-inch jar. I love it. I think it's great. Okay, beautifully done, nice colors, very, very, ta you know, very tactile. Uh, it's got this great honeycomb uh, neck uh, going up over it. But the estimate is, you know, eight to twelve thousand dollars. It came from the uh, Howell and Howard collection. Okay, it's been in the museum for a long time, and um, we'll see how it uh, see how it goes. But if you if you like Feiwa, there's a number of them. There's another one right here. This is also from the Howard collection. He collected them, obviously. This is a bit more open with a blue glazed ground, also about 14 inches tall, also with an eight to $12,000 estimate. And then of course, there's, you notice they're including photographs of the co different collectors. This was Potter Palmer. He died uh, sort of toward the end of World War II. And this is a very, very nice um, a Jai Jing double gourd vase. Uh, nice, nice early example. And there's lots of Ming uh, pieces. These are a couple of Wukai form goo vases, uh, dragon vases, and so on and so forth. All right. Now, we're going to get over to something that I thought was really cool. And this was a, a gift to the museum by one of their greatest benefactors. Uh, this is Kate Sturgis Buckingham. And she was, what was she known as? The Mary Spinster or something? What was it? Uh, Chicago's grandest spinster, Kate Sturgis Buckingham. She inherited a, a, a massive fortune at a very young age, and by the time she was in her early 30s, she was doing all kinds of uh, good works with the money and collecting art and, and benefacting museums was one of them. And she bought this, this really nice Taipei Zun water pot, Kung Shi period, Markin period. But look at the color. The color on this is fabulous. It's pink. Uh, this is technically, they call these peach bloom, but this is a, a pink thing, a pink glaze with the uh, impressed uh, underglaze uh, dragon. And you've seen them in the red peach bloom. Well, here's one that's pink. And it's such a pretty thing and very unusual color. And the estimates doesn't seem insane to me. Eighty to $120,000. It's a lot of money. But, you know, what a color. What a great color. So we'll see how how that all goes. It's uh, just a, a great thing. This the catalog is full of interesting things. Um, if you're if you're interested in all, uh, you know a really wide range, they have things like this big pot uh, that is a, is a you know, Chan Chu Chan Chu Ping. Uh, it's about 24 uh, inches tall, estimated at three to five hundred thousand. A very very fine one. And uh, this one was collected by uh, the folks over here, Martin Ryerson. Okay, he was a legendary collector of art of all kinds. There's a picture of him here visiting Monet at Giverny and going through his gardens. He, he owned, he bought a number of paintings from Monet. Uh, can you imagine going to that place and you know, hanging out with Monet for an afternoon? Monet is the, the uh, rather eccentric looking bearded gentleman, if you didn't know. All right, but here's this great dragon vase, uh, beautiful form. And these turn up periodically. He managed to get himself one and that's being deaccessioned, okay? All right, now over to, um, oh, page 128 in this catalog. If you go to the catalog, you're going to find something. This is what I wanted to mention, was that the museum um, has the rest of the collection from the Chicago Art Institute is an online sale. So if you can't get to the auction, there's some really wonderful things in the online sale. And in, in, in the online sale, um, bidding starts on the 10th and runs through the 17th. I think this is fantastic that they're doing this. And last week we had mentioned that we're thinking of starting to cover more of these, not just these, but sales at smaller auction houses on the bid amount site to let people know about them. 
take a look. And I th I'm thrilled to death that Christie's is doing this, Sotheby's is doing it, Bonhams. They're all going to be doing it before long. But this is a page, uh, pages of some very fine things that are being deaccessioned. And uh, with, I think, pretty reasonable estimates across the board. Uh, you have this very nice uh, Kung Shi jar, okay, six inches tall, $1,200 to $1,800 with the, uh, with, the, with, the, with the person galloping along riding the, riding the uh, Fu Lion or Chillin'. Quillen. There's a Kangxi uh, uh, Phoenix tail vase, nice one. Uh, still though, you have to call and get a, a condition reports. But that's an 18-inch vase with a three to five thousand dollar estimate. That's certainly not uh, unusual. All right, and there's a, some more Fedwa pieces. There's another one. All right, this one is 11 inches tall, beautifully done. Um, but if you go through there, I think you'll find some of the estimates rather surprising. And if you're a dealer, you should definitely check these out because I think if you go fishing in here and leave lots of bids um, on the on the lower scale, you're going to hook a few things. Okay, make it, give it a shot anyway. All right, and the people at Christie's are great about um, all the auction houses, Sotheby's and Bonhams too. They're all really good about condition reports and um, you know encouraging you to take part. And the online thing is something they're very serious about getting underway. But at any rate, there's a lot of good material on here, peaking glass, lacquer, and so forth, okay? So check that out, all righty? And now we're going to mosey on over to the, uh, I think this is the Sotheby's sale, right? No, this is, oh, this is uh, Christie's um, uh, 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 Himalayan uh, Tibetan works of art. Um, there's a lot of bronzes in here, and I decided I wouldn't go through the whole thing. But there's one piece in here I want to show everyone because it's something I haven't seen. I, this is a really great thing. Really great thing is this. Okay, this is a Zetan Tantric Buddha figure from Tibet, mid late Ming Dynasty, 17th century, or, or you know, very late Ming. But it is an absolutely fantastic thing. It is a fairly good size, 14 inches tall, but made from Zetan wood, carved figure. I thought it was a bronze when I first saw it. it sure looks like it, doesn't it? But it's not. It's carved out of Zetan, which was, as many of you know, was a, 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 this amazing wood that was primarily exported out of India into China. Um, uh, it was, was extremely rare back then. It's a lot rarer today. And the Chinese were crazy about carving it. It's sometimes known as purple wood. And uh, this is a, a Buddha figure. Uh, uh, unbelievably uh, rare thing, from what I can tell. And uh, I'm uh, very curious to see uh, how much interest there is in this. It's, a, it's esoteric, so they're not always, um, it, it, buyers don't always have a comparable to go by. How much is it worth? So we'll see. All right, it's been, it was acquired prior, acquired in 1984, 1984 in Hong Kong, and it's carrying a uh, 100 to $150,000 estimate. So we'll see how that does, all right? Uh, the next thing is um, this, the metalworks. Uh, if you're really interested in Chinese silver, gold, and early stuff, uh, this is a, a, a very nice uh, catalog to browse through. If you're not used to seeing it, they did a lot of very fine gold and silver work, There's in particular the Lotus Bowl on the cover, which is uh, repoussé and then uh, in silver and then gilded you know, from the Tang Dynasty. But some of their gold, some of the metalwork that the Chinese did is just so elegant. It's uh, mind blowing. And they have good backgrounds on all the collectors, and they have a lot of explanations on uh, how these things were done, all right, from, from weights to, to fittings and all kinds of crazy stuff. But the, the centerpiece of this whole sale is the Lotus Bowl on the cover. Uh, exceptional. Um, there's also a Lotus uh, stem cup I, in the Jungkook collection coming collection coming up. Um, it's in here as well. All right, but this is an important parcel gilt silver bowl Tang Dynasty. It has a two to three million dollar estimate on it. It's nine inches in diameter. It's got a very good uh, uh, history behind it. Uh, here it is. It was in the Kempe collection. Those of you who have been around for a while remember know who he is. He has a massive collection in Sweden. Um, uh, Dr. Kempe uh, and his things have turned up in exhibitions. I had some things from his collection a number of years ago, and it was wonderful. And this bowl has been exhibited at the Smithsonian Asia Gallery uh, back in the Kempe collection, and it's been shown in nine other museums. It's been this bowl has been in books, and so on. 
and uh, we'll see how this will be really a test of, of the market for these bulls. But the quality of this thing is just fantastic, and you notice how deeply uh, the, the work is, is done and the fine detail all the way through. Just beautiful, beautiful piece of metal work, and uh, we're going to see how that does, all right? And that is, like, as I said, two to three million dollars. That's a lot of money for a nine inch bowl. I know everybody agrees with that. Going, whoa, that's a lot, yeah. And uh, then we get on to this Chinese, um, uh, important Chinese works of art. It's Sotheby's. They also have some great things. Um, in the sale, in particular, the cover lot, which is, which is, at, it's a, it was, a, it's a porcelain that was painted by Tang Ying, uh, and Tang Ying, as some of you know was the uh, director of the imperial kilns during the late Yongchen and early Qinlung period. He died in 1756. He was a, he was a, a, he was a scholar, he was a painter, a poet, and uh, uh, both emperors, Yongchen and his son Qinlung, uh, thought a great deal with, of him and had him run the imperial kilns and oversee the artwork that was done because he had such phenomenal taste. So we'll, um, we're going to get to that screen in a minute, but we're going to get on to here first, and this was the John Milton Bonham collection. Um, nice old collection, and there were receipts in here for what he paid for some of these things, and it was, you know, 10 or $12 a piece back in the day around 1900, 1910, and uh, there's some great objects here. That and, Oh, here are some of the receipts. All right, he shopped at, uh, let's see, this is Latimer Auctioneers um, on G Street Northwest in Chicago. Porcelain vase, seven dollars, ten dollars, nine dollars, nine dollars. He paid fifteen for a bowl. Okay, he paid uh, twenty-one dollars for a figure, another bowl, and so forth. Okay, just uh, it's fascinating. It's fascinating to look at these old receipts. This really interesting stuff. All right, now let's see uh, what he got. All right, there's some. God, it's, it's this is a beautiful collection. Um, I'm gonna hop over here. I think this is the Kung sheep. Nope. Hold on. Back up. Um, 36. We'll get to we'll get to the, this collection in a minute. There we go. This a rare copper red and underglazed blue water pot, um, Kangxi Mark and Peard, but a really really fine one. This is a, a superb example, and this came from uh, Mr. Bonham bought this back in the day. But the quality of the underglazed red on this is just super, and there's a little bit of underglazed blue around the bottom, and there's some underglazed blue um, uh, framing the vine pattern running around the top. But uh, a beautiful, beautiful example, and it's got a fairly stiff estimate on it, but not crazy, two to $300,000. Uh, in this quality, that is not a crazy price. And this thing, these are very small, as you know, this thing's only three inches tall. But it's a little jewel. It's a gem of a thing. And there's another picture of it over here where they uh, enlarged it so you can get in a bit closer. And it's very important that you see these things up close. You get to see the the quality of the glaze, the, the way the, the red is applied, the, all the little details. And nowadays you can do it online, which is pretty terrific. All right. And then on to this, the immortal vase. That was that blue and white vase that you just saw a second ago. Uh, absolutely rare, rare, rare bird. Uh, there it is. Okay. This is just fantastic. Okay. 16 immortals um, um, are going around it. Or I think there's 16 of them. At any rate, here they are. All right. But what an unusual, unusual piece of porcelain. Uh, just uh, all floating on waves. Okay, just absolutely fantastic. It is Qinlung Mark and period. But what's interesting is that this form, people often think of them as being eight or nine inches tall. This one, again, it's like, it's like that tea desk glaze piece. It's a whopper. This thing is 16 inches tall, which is pretty unusual for one of these. This shape I generally associate with vases under 10 or 11 inches. This is a big one. All right, and uh, I believe it's the vase that was in there that he paid 17 bucks for, but on the list. But anyway, it's it's estimated at two to three hundred thousand dollars now, and uh, it doesn't seem insane to me because the subject matter is very very desirable. We'll see how that does. All right, and uh, let's see where we're going next. Oh, the Steinberg collection of monochromes. This was nifty stuff. If you like monochromes, you want to check out this catalog. Uh, Blamer and Arnold Steinberg, and they've got about, I don't know, 20 or 30 uh, fabulous little monochromes on there. Note the beautiful, pure colors. The colors are just even and superb. They're all, all nearly all Qing. This is Yongchen uh, white glaze stem cup. Um, 
uh, it's, they call this the eight Buddhist emblem stem cup. It is estimated at fifty to seventy thousand dollars. And then mosey on over here, you have a copper red one of Yongchen, Yongchen Mark and period, and then a really fine blue glaze stem ball on the right. No, it glows. Notice the, the the sheen of the glaze on this. Just beautiful. It was acquired um, in London by the family about 15 years ago. Okay. I don't know how they let this stuff go. Gosh. Uh, uh, anyway. Uh, and then you have, again, uh, uh, some very, very fine Qinlong and Yongshan again. This, uh, this, this high-footed ball is just beautiful. They call those stem balls I, on the catalogs. I always think of them as high-footed. But anyway, that's what it is. Uh, about seven inches in diameter. And uh, these are all estimated, in case you're wondering um, what the prices uh, they're expecting for these are. Uh, let's see, eight to 12,000. I mean, not the world, 20 to 30,000 for this, this bowl, the high-footed one. Um, this particular bowl here, this is a, a pretty rare one. It's a, it's a floral bowl, solid on glazed, Mark and period, Yongshen period. And uh, it's estimated, this one's a little more because it's got a lot of decoration, 50 to $70,000. All right, and this wonderful yellow egg yolk yellow bowl, that beautiful yellow color, uh, seven inches in diameter, twenty to thirty thousand, and it is Chin Lung period, and so on. And there are more. That's a nice, nice looking uh, arrow vase. Who formed arrow vase there? Uh, Qing Dynasty. Uh, they don't date it. They, they well, they they say it's Chin Lung period, but it's not marked. All right. And this was uh, originally from the Ralph Chait collection back in the 1950s. And then it was sold by Ralph Chait Galleries again in 2003. All right, and on and on it goes. Okay, if you like a great, 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 great um, Dalguan uh, brush washer in uh, Claire de Lune or the soft blue with the relief work, there's one for you right there. Th Thirty to fifty thousand dollars, and uh, we'll see how all that goes. But just uh, really fabulous things. All right, and then. Um, What's coming up now here? Tang Yin screen. This is absolutely elegant. This is an absolutely amazing screen. And I think it's going to do, I hope it does a lot better than its estimate. Um, Tang Ying, uh, the artist who did this, was the uh, keeper or the director of the Imperial Kilns, as I mentioned before, between the, from Yongchen to uh, the Qin, early Qin Lung period. And uh, he died around 1757, 1756. 1756. And uh, he had an amazing eye, and uh, here are some other examples of his work. They do not come up in the off uh, on the market very often because the most examples that are known are already in uh, major collections uh, in, 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 in China or in the Palace Collection or in the collection in Taiwan. And uh, he was notable for these bright colors, these, these, these brilliant colors, the use of blue, very bold, but very beautiful work, absolutely beautiful. And uh, this is a screen that he did. It's dated around 18, uh, 1756, I believe, shortly before he died. Uh, let me see, here's the date. Uh, 1755, a year before he died. And uh, here's a close-up of the work. And it's a classical scene. It's a scene that you've seen on Chin Lung dishes. You've seen them on, on all kinds of things. You see, obviously see them in, in regular paintings. And he, he was a superb artist himself, and he painted this on porcelain. And uh, you really need, if you're fascinated by uh, Famille Rose enamels and how it was done, this guy was the master. And you should come over and really study this work. Just stupendously well done. Love the waterfall coming through the rocks at the top and then the birds flying overhead and this little scholar's studio over here up on the, on the, on the rock. There's a person inside this building. Just sort of the very, uh, very idyllic life in China with a fishing boat and the whole bed. Just uh, absolutely fabulous, and it's estimated, I think, modestly at 120 to 150 thousand dollars. That that estimate puzzles me, uh, because Republic good Republic plaques have brought more than this, and this is done by um, one of the most famous historic figures uh, of all of Chinese porcelain. So we'll we'll see how that does, but uh, uh, boy, what a thing! What a thing it is! And uh, then on to this. Um, the next one is a pair of wooden uh, plaques. 
Uh, I want to get the page right here. Let's see if we get you over there. There it is. And this had belonged to William Skinner. And before that, it belonged to A.W. Barr, the guy that owned the uh, Yang, uh, Tang Ying uh, plaque. And it's a pair of wooden panels that are set um, with the 16 Liu Hans. This was done for the Qinlong Emperor. Um, and here they are. The detail on these little tiny bronzes is quite exceptional. And uh, here's, a, here's another picture of it. It is imperially inscribed, and there's a pair of them. Here they are. And uh, they've, they've, they've been well documented. As I mentioned, they came from the Bar collection, and then they were, they were sold later, and they ended up in, in the Skinner collection. All right. And what's really interesting about this is that there is a catalog that we have on the site. If you go over to Bit Amount and you just type in Bar, B-A-H-R, it'll bring you to this catalog. And this was a sale that was conducted. Let's open it up. This is one of those PDF things that we converted from January 13th, 1916. And uh, this is when uh, this came from the bar collection. And this is when Skinner acquired it in this auction. All right. Or his representative did. He ended up with it regardless. And uh, if you scroll down here, we've got to get to the plaque, uh, the panel. Mm -mm 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 -mm. There it is. All right. Here they are. This is when they were sold back in 1916. They were illustrated. Most auctions didn't illustrate things back then. It was sort of an unusual thing to include pictures. And um, there they are. And if you come over here, the description was very simple. A rare pair of large teak carved panels. Chin Lung, spelled C-H-I-E-N, because the spellings were done differently then. Um, Wade Giles to Pinyin. And um, made us pictures for hanging on walls with, with frames on on, um, on on same wood decorated with gilded metals, fretted and chased angles and plates. Um, also heavy hangers. Carving is singularly bold and in high relief, yet con considerable detail and represents the 16 Lohans or Buddhist apostles uh, in different positions on rocks near a pavilion amidst woods and streams. The figures are in gilded bronze. The characters um, enumerate each Lohan and was written by the, by, uh, is, is, and w was written by the Emperor Chinling. He's talking about the poem at the top of the page, all right. And uh, the, the back here is uh, over here is the back of the of the uh, of uh, no those are those are the Kingfisher panels. Never mind. And uh, a rare work of art owned by the Imperial family, which it was, okay. And uh, we're going to hop back over here. That's the that's a little just a little bit of the history on it. If you like to follow these things, but there they are, and uh, they have a, a, a rather stout estimate, but not a crazy estimate. Uh, they are estimated at. Let's get back over here again. Two hundred and fifty to three hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars, but for imperial work um, and rare and with a good history, uh, I suspect they'll probably get there just fine on their own. All right, so now on to the way pottery figures. There we go. These these way figures, I loved these. They're not the most expensive thing by any stretch in here, but I think they're great. Northern Way Dynasty pottery figures. They're about twenty five inches tall, or so yeah, twenty five and a quarter inches. But I love the surface on them. I love the look of them. Now they're not cheap. They're fifty to seventy thousand is the estimate. But um, I just thought these were just wonderful. And it's a pair, and they're big, and just a great surface. Um, uh, and they appear to be in really nice condition overall. Um, they've, there's some pigment loss, obviously, because they're, they're extremely old. But, but beautiful quality. Uh, the feet are in good shape. They're not all bashed in the way they are sometimes. They stand up nicely. And uh, we'll see how those uh, uh, fare this uh, coming week. But I, I like them a lot. I thought those were great. And these came from the collection of Russell, was it Russell? Yeah, Russell Tyson. All right. And they, these were, again, uh, given to the museum. And then over to uh, here, uh, this is the, um, uh, uh, the Irving collection. Okay, this is the Irving collection of jades. And mostly jades, a lot of jades. This is the load of stuff that was given uh, when, when, when Florence and Herbert Irving died. You remember last winter there was an auction of their uh, some of their things. They did two sales, and they, the Irvings were inveterate collectors. He was the founder of Cisco Systems, the uh, food company with his brother. 
uh, very generous, very successful guy, lived across the street from the Metropolitan Museum of Art. They were very active at the museum, and uh, they were very kind to the museum, and the museum was kind to them. And uh, they left them a lot of stuff. They owned thousands of thousands of items, Chinese, Japanese, and some Korean even. And uh, this is part of the gift that they left to the Met, and the Met is deaccessioning some of it in accordance with the gift to, to raise some cash to broaden um, the uh, core of the Irving collection even more. All right, they went through this and they thought we can we can uh, vary things a little bit. And there's a lot of good jades in here. Okay, a lot, a lot of really good jade. But there's one jade in particular is the brush pot. It's on the cover. It's this. It's estimated at five to seven hundred thousand dollars. It's again Coton jade, beautifully carved, unbelievably well carved. There's a nice write up on it. If you love jades, you want to come and see this thing. Uh, the, the carving of this jade is among the best of any jade brush pot I've ever seen, uh, especially when you come in close and examine the figures, the detail of each little figure. And these are small. These are not big figures. This, this pot is only about, what is it, uh, six inches tall? Yeah, a little over six inches tall. So those figures are maybe uh, three quarters of an inch tall. And uh, it, it, they, they've done a, a panoramic of this carving here where you can pull it in and you can travel across it and look at it like a giant landscape. Uh, I love doing that. Look at that. Look at the details. All the little figures tucked in there. And um, we'll see how it does with its estimate, but extremely rare. And it was one of the great jades in their collection, though they had many. You remember they had the uh, the pig jade that, uh, that, that they couldn't figure out uh, how old it was, really, that was sold from their collection. It was estimated at five to $7,000, ended up selling for over $2 million. Because there are only a few people in the world that can really identify those that particular jade, um, so good on them. Okay, and uh, the rest of the catalog is just stupendous. Uh, I I I, um, I don't want to make this video last forever, but if you're a jade buyer, go through this catalog because the Irvings had impeccable taste in jade, and there's some great brush washers, boulders, pendants, you name it, are in here. Okay. And then hop over here to the Junkunk collection. This is another sale of the Junkunk collection. All amazingly rare stuff. This is mo all metalworks in this go around here, including chariot fittings and uh, scholars' objects and pendants and all. Just the neatest. And a lot of them are small. A lot of them are really small, but really interesting. And um, let me see here. We'll just open it up and... Uh, flip through to give you some idea. There's also some more information on, on, on Jungkook as the collector. Um, this was one of my favorite things in the sale. It's not the most expensive thing, I don't think, but it's a, a, a really great flip back this page. Here we go. This really nice, uh, uh, it's a Tang Dynasty Jade Camel, but it's almost like a serpent, the way it's curled. It um, has a very sort of elongated uh, neck. Uh, I just loved it. All right, and uh, here it is again. There it is. Just beautiful quality, Tang Dynasty, extremely rare, you know the rest, right? And uh, we'll see how uh, the, the crowd jumps on this. And this is tiny. I want to give you the exact um, um, uh, measurement of this little camel. Two inches, little two-inch thing, just but just wonderful. And uh, the rest of the catalog is fascinating. And there's some great, if you've ever wondered how they, that with, how they did bronze mounts for chariot axles and all this other crazy stuff, it's all in here. It's also um, a turquoise inlaid sword, bronze sword, and gold heads, and all this sort of, all these great fittings. Jade blades. Here's that uh, 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 Tang Dynasty Lotus Cup. I had mentioned that because we were looking at the Lotus Bowl over on the cover of the other catalog. Look at this. This is a very heavily um, a partial gilt silver uh, uh, Tang Dynasty cup, stem cup. And it's just elegant as hell. So I uh, hope you come over and take a look at that. <clears throat> now Sotheby's, like Christie's, also has a, they have a Tibetan... Um, uh, works of art sale in this uh, sale. A lot of bronzes, as I mentioned, and there's some dandies in here, but boy, there's a lot of bronzes coming on the market right now, and uh, we'll see how they do. And then lastly, we're, we'll hop over here to Bonhams. Bonhams has the Edmund and Julie Lewis collection, part one, which of course means they're expecting more. I hope they get it, and I'm, I'm sure they do. They wouldn't call it part one if they didn't. And uh, in it is this. 
Uh, this is mostly Japanese and Korean works of art, but in it is this absolutely great Goyo period uh, uh, Buddha. It's big, it's uh, 14 inches tall. <coughs> No, excuse me. I had to check. It's 20 inches tall. Big one. Uh, very unusual. With an estimate of 800 to um, 800 thousand dollars to 1.2 million. But very nice quality. Very unusual. And if you like bronzes, it's it's always fun to look at Korean ones to see how they vary from the Tibetan models. All right. And this is they they've provided some good pictures here. Side shots, front shots, side you know, and angle shots. All right. You want to check that out. And if you are a Japanese lacquer collector in this catalog, they have some great, great pieces of Japanese lacquer, okay, in, including this large Nagoro style um, hot water ewer on the side, the beautifully shaped handle. This, and then the, underneath it, there's a, a, a Nagoro style uh, footed tray with a sake pourer on it. You see the little spout on the side, in case you missed it, it's not just a bowl, it's a pourer. And uh, it goes on and on, but there's some very, very, very fine uh, uh, Meiji period and earlier lacquer. So if you're a buyer of that stuff, you want to definitely check this out. Lots of inros, lots of pen sets, lots of plaques, some statues. And then you have these funky folk art, you know, Kano Tesai, um, uh, contemporary, more contemporary uh, masks mounted on boards and so on and so forth. So you want to check, you want to check that catalog out if you're a Japanese buyer. All right, and there are others. There's a calligraphy sale um, in this in this auction, as well as uh, several others. All right. Oh, and there's another Japanese sale over at Christie's is having one. Um, there's a lot of sales, so come over to the site and uh, take a look. And I I hope you enjoyed this, and uh, we're going to wrap it up right now. Thanks so much. And if you haven't subscribed to us yet, please do. Um, we like seeing new subscribers. Come over to bitamount.com and see what we're doing over there, what we find each week. And uh, we'll see you all on Friday with the regular video. Okay. Bye-bye.